In our previous lesson, we learned how to define our own custom actions in our Sublime Text plugins by defining our own command classes. And one of the things we can do while we're defining our command classes is defining what arguments our commands need to be invoked with in order to carry out their actions. Now, arguments in commands are a very important aspect of commands because they allow the same code to carry out multiple different types of actions. They really increase the facility of a command. Now, normally when you use a command, you might bind it to a key or add it to a menu entry, and that means that you're fixing what arguments that command it will be executed with when the key is pressed or the menu entry is chosen. It can be often beneficial for a command to be able to ask the user for the input that it needs in order to carry out the appropriate action for whatever situation it's being invoked in. This is possible in Sublime Text, and that is the topic of today's lesson, Input Handlers. <laughs> Hey, hello fellow Sublime Text Fanatics, Odat Nerd here. Welcome back to Plugin 101, the video course teaching you how to become a package and plugin author in Sublime Text. Now the topic of this week's lesson is input handlers. Now this goes hand in hand with the topic of last week's lesson, commands. In the previous lesson, we learned how to define our own custom commands or actions in our Sublime Text plugins. And that as a part of that, when we define a command, we can also define the arguments that that command takes. And a command can use arguments to modify how it carries out its actions based on the input that you provide it via that argument. So you gain a lot more facility out of your commands in that way. You can tell it exactly what it is that you need to do. Now, normally when you've seen a use of a command, it was added to the command palette or it was a menu entry or a key binding. And in all of those cases, you generally specify not only the commands you'd like to execute, but also the exact arguments that you want to give it. And that works great for a lot of things, but there are cases where you can't know ahead of time what the argument argument to the command should be, it depends on the situation in which the command is actually used. And this is where the topic of input handlers comes into play, because it allows you, as your command is about to be executed, to ask the user for what they think the arguments to the command should actually be. And as a result of that, you gain a lot more flexibility in your command executions. Now, there are two different ways for you to gather this sort of input as your command is being executed, and you've actually used both of them in your time in Sublime Text, even if you didn't necessarily know that you were doing that. The first type of input handler that you can create is a text input handler. And it's, as its name suggests, it allows you to gather a line of text, uh, any arbitrary text that you might like to add, a log entry, the name of something, if you're renaming a file, for example. And uh, this is you know, vital for a lot of things. Now, an example of that built into Sublime is the arithmetic command, which asks you when you execute it, what expression expression you'd like it to evaluate. And you can provide arguments to this specific set arguments for cases when you know you're always going to want to do the same thing. But by and large, the arithmetic or expression that you need to expand here depends on what it is that you're doing. A text input handler allows you to gather that particular input. And sometimes, instead of just freeform text, there may be a constrained set of possible options that you'd like the user to choose from. And for something like that, we can create what we refer to as a list input handler, which again, as the name suggests, provides a list of items. And an example of that that's built into Sublime is the view package file command, which when you execute it, uh, asks you for the name of a particular uh or package file that you would like to open. And there's a predefined list of these because there's a finite number of package resources that are actually available. And we're gonna learn in today's lesson the basics of what these input handlers are and how they work. And this is a pretty big topic, so this is just gonna be an introduction to that. And with this introductory information under our belt, in the next lesson, we can go into more detail as we did in the previous lesson on commands and learn exactly all of the methods that we can use inside of an input handler to interface with Sublime Text. So if you haven't already subscribed, you're not going to want to miss out on that. Use those buttons down below. To help demonstrate this and get some of the key concepts, we have this simple uh, plugin sample here to look at that defines a command and a couple of input handlers. Now let's first focus on the command at the bottom and recap a little bit of what we learned in the lesson on commands in that previous lesson. And that is that in order to define a command, you define a class. Your plugin can contain any class you might like. So in order to mark your class as being a command, your class has to subclass one of the known types of commands, of which there are three. 
three, text command, window command, and application command. All command classes share a set of methods that Sublime knows about inherently and will invoke, things that allow it to actually execute your command or ask it if it should be enabled or get its caption if it's in a menu, things of that nature. And apart from that, you can choose to add any other methods to your command that you like. The name of a command is derived using very specific rules from the name of the class that's used to define it. And remember, those rules are the first character is converted to lowercase. If it's uppercase, every other uppercase character is converted to an underscore and a lowercase equivalent. And then if that ends up in ending in underscore command, throw that part away. So example command becomes just the lowercase word example, that's the command here. Now, if we look up to the top of the file, these are two input handlers. They follow much of those same rules and general thought process as commands do. In order to define an input handler, you need to define a class. And again, because you can have arbitrary classes in your plugin, in order to mark your class as an input handler, it has to subclass from one of the known types of input handlers, of which there are currently two, text input handler for getting a string of text and list input handler for showing the user a list of items. There is a specific set of methods that are associated with input handlers that Sublime will execute to interact with your input handler, such as getting its initial text or its initial list of items and validation of that input, which is something we're going to cover in the future lesson. Apart from that, you can apply any other methods to a, a input handler as you might like. And the name of the class is special. Now, where the name of a command class represents the name of the command that that class represents, the name of an input handler represents what argument name to some command somewhere that actually represents. And if that doesn't make sense, it's going to become clear in just a moment as we go through the example. But the exact same process for converting a class name into a command name is done for an input handler, except that in that last step, instead of looking for underscore command and throwing it away, it looks for underscore input underscore handler. So in the case of the two input handlers here, message input handler becomes under, lowercase message underscore input underscore handler. The underscore input underscore handler is thrown away. What's left is the text message. So the message input handler is for representing and gathering the value of a command argument named message. Similarly, for position input handler, using the exact same logic, this is going to be for the argument named position. Now, there's a little bit of setup that you have to do in order to have input handlers work. And the first and most important of these, so I'm going to say it once and then I'm going to say it a second time, is your command needs to be in the command palette in order to use an input handler. So again, because this is super important, it's one of those things that when you remember it, it's very obvious, but it's very easy to forget. In order to use an input handler, your command must be added to the command palette. Now, there are sample commands, as we know, the uh, arithmetic command, the view package file command, are examples of commands that use uh, the, the input handlers, and they are available in the command palette. Now, this is very important because as when you use those commands, you'll know that when you actually execute the command from the command palette, it's right there in the command palette that you're prompted for the expression or the file that it is that you want to open. That input happens directly inside of the uh, command palette. So for that reason, your command definitely has to be added to the command palette. Now, this is a very easy task. We have a sample of that right here. You need to create a sublime-commands file. And again, this is something that's going to be the topic of a future lesson for more detail and just focused on this. But the example here should be enough to get you going in most cases. This is an example of a JSON formatted file whose first and last characters needs to be square brackets because this is a list of things that are going to be added. And and each one of those items has the caption for this particular item to tell what it should look like inside of the command palette, the name of the uh, command, and then the names of the arguments. The name of this file can be anything you like. Uh, normally, you would name this after your package, for example. Uh, it's uh, common to see these files stored as default.sublime commands because that's what Sublime uses by default for all of the command palette entries that it adds. And so those files would combine together. Now, 
Now that we've done the very important step of actually adding this to the command palette, we can look at how this actually works. Now the thing that ties together your input handlers, your command, and the command palette is the input method in your command. Now this is something that we discussed as existing as a method in command classes in that lesson on commands, but we glossed over what it was actually for because you need to know a little bit about input handlers to be able to understand what this method is for and when Sublime might actually call it. Now, if we were to look at the run method of our command, we can see that the arguments that we've added here, a message and position, indicates to us and to Sublime that when you execute this command, you need to provide two arguments, the message argument and the position argument, which for our command specifies what message is going to be inserted into the buffer and where in the buffer it's going to be inserted. If you were to bind this command to a key or add it to uh, a menu entry or add it to the command palette in absence of what we're talking about in this particular method, or in our particular case, execute it from the console because they didn't want to set up a key binding. If you don't provide the values for those arguments, the result for all of those potential types of invocation is an error message in the console where Sublime's telling you that that it couldn't execute the command because it was expecting two arguments that it didn't get. And again, I tested this here in the console. If you bound this to a key, the exact same thing would happen. It would seem to do nothing. And if you looked in the console, you would see this particular message. And that's Sublime's way of telling you, you told me this command took arguments, but you didn't provide them. I can't execute it. With input handlers and having our command in the command palette, there's actually something different that happens here. Now what happens is your command is in the command palette, it's executed from the command palette, Sublime tries to run it with whatever arguments the command palette entry gave it, uh, which we just saw a moment ago, uh, or is none for right now. And if that generates an error such as we just saw, then instead of actually displaying that error in the console, Sublime checks first. Does your command implement an input method? And if it does, it will call the input method with whatever arguments it was given, which in this case is none, it was an empty dictionary, and, and to tell your command, hey, um, you require arguments, but not all of them were given, how do I prompt the user for that? And the job of the input method is to examine that arguments dictionary and return back an instance of a input handler that should be used to ask the user for that particular uh, argument or none to say, uh, you, there's just nothing I can do about this. So in our input method, we have uh, four lines here. And the first two say, if the message argument isn't in the list of arguments that we were given, then what you want to use is the message input handler. Use that to ask the user what the message should actually be. Or if a message argument was provided, but a position argument wasn't, then use a position input handler to ask the user what position it was that they expected. And Sublime will then use the input handler to gather the input, and when it's all done, it tries to run the command again with the uh, arguments that it got, and the result, hopefully, is your command actually works. Now, if we were to look upwards in the file here a little bit, we have two input handlers that are uh, listed in here. The first one is named message input handler, and we know that that's going to be converted to uh, a lowercase string message that represents what command argument this is. So this is named message input handler because our command takes an argument of message. Because it's a text input handler, it's going to ask the user to input a line of text, whatever text they might like. Now there's a lot of methods in this class, and as I mentioned, we're going to go into that in more detail, what all of the methods are in these input handlers in the next lesson. So if you haven't already done so, you're not going to want to miss that after this lesson. So use those buttons down below to subscribe, and you ring the bell notification icon, and you'll know when that lesson drops. But for our purposes here, we're using two methods. The first is initial text, which is something that Sublime will call to say, 
what initial value should exist in the command palette? Now, this could return an empty string, which it would if you didn't implement this method, or we could uh, specify some text. So here I've specified hello world. And what that would do is prompt the user, and we'll see this in just a second, for what text to use for the argument named message. And it'll use a default of hello world. Once you choose that by hitting enter, Sublime will then ask this input handler, is there more input that we might need to ask the user for? And it provides to the user a list of actual arguments that the command got. So here we do the same test as we did down there in that input method to say, hey, if, if now that we have a value for the message argument, if there wasn't already a value for position, then you should at, use a position input handler to gather that particular argument. So Sublime would either uh, go off and use an input handler for position, or it might you might have already provided that. Now down here in the position input handler, the exact same things are happening. Now this is a list input handler. That means that instead of allowing you to enter a line of text, what you're actually doing is providing a list of one or more potential options to choose from. And as a result, the method that we use here is not initial text, but list items, which allows us to provide a list of the items that should appear in the list. And this is a list of tuples in this particular case. So the first item in the tuple is what we would see in the input handler's entry in the command palette to allow us to choose the argument. And the value, the second value in the tuple, either zero or minus one, is what would actually be used as the value for that argument. Now, just like the text input handler, when the position input handler, when you choose an item and press enter, Sublime would invoke its next input method to see, is there another argument? We haven't implemented that method. The default there is to return none, which means, no, there's no more arguments, which tells Sublime to go ahead and rerun the command now that it has gathered the arguments. So recalling that over here in the sample.sublime commands, we've added this with a caption of a sample command so that it appears near the top of the uh, command palette, which is something I generally do for testing. We have given it a command of example and the argument dictionary is completely empty. So we open the command palette. Here is a sample command. Now, if we didn't have that input method in there, then executing this would generate that error in the console like we saw. But now when I choose it, Sublime has invoked the input method and it knows that we didn't provide the message argument. So it's using that particular input handler uh, which is showing us the text hello world just like we saw it so we could enter press enter now or choose whatever text we might like so i'm going to choose that now that argument is locked in if you will we can see it right there but because we're using input handlers we could use backspace and backspace over that and now we're able to modify this particular argument however we might like and as a matter of fact what you can also do here and this is key this is why this only works for commands in the command palette it's possible to backspace here to go right back to the command palette again. Now there's a little bit of a disconnect here. When I choose a sample command, it says insert there. We're gonna explain what that means in just a second. But we have chosen the hello world uh, argument here. And now when we hit enter, it's moved on to the next argument, which is the position. Now we can choose here top of file or bottom of the file. And we also have the ability to filter this text. This is something that's built into the input handler. So we could type BO for bottom, TO for top, uh, if, for example, to hit the right thing. When I choose this one, the command executes and it inserts hello world up there at the start of the buffer. And uh, similarly, we could run that same command again and choose bottom of the file and have it injected at the bottom because of the way the command is actually implemented. Now, if we come back to this command again, note that in our input method here in the command, we've said if message isn't in args, use a message input handler. Otherwise, if position isn't specified, use position input handler. And we've also kind of duplicated that up 
up in the next input of message input handler. The message input handler knows that the next argument is probably the position if it wasn't already provided. Doing it this way allows us to do things like this. Now we've, ex we've provided this absolutely no arguments whatsoever, so Sublime needed to ask us for both of them, right? If I was to uncomment the sample part, like so. Now when we execute the command, we've already given it the text of sample, so it doesn't need to ask us for that. It just needs to ask us what position we want this to be in. And we could say, for example, bottom, like so, because that minimizes the syntax highlighting that we see here. And so that automatically inserted the text that we provided. Similarly, we can swap that and say that it's always going to be position zero, but we want to be prompted for the text. And when I choose the command, it's allowing me to type the text in like so, and it doesn't need to ask for the position because it already has it. And um, finally, as a test, as you might expect, if you present both arguments, the command just executes directly like you might expect. Now, the last thing to note here is that the caption here says a sample command, but when we open it and execute it uh, after commenting these arguments out, the first item in there says insert. Now this spins us all the way back to the last method in a command that we discussed in the command methods, uh, which is input description, which we can see right down there at the bottom. It's returning the text insert. This is an optional uh, method. You don't have to implement this, but if you do, it tells Sublime what the command should look like while it's executing so that it can be a little bit different. So if I close that and we were to comment this method out like so, when we run a sample command, command, it says a sample command right there uh, in, the, uh, in the command palette. So this is what these last two command uh, com methods represent. And this is a little bit of an introduction to how we would actually use an input handler. We can use it to gather text. We can use it to gather a list. And we're going to cover more of the details of what all input handlers can do because there's way more functionality than we've seen here in the next lesson. As a recap of what we covered in today's lesson, we can define our own commands in Sublime Text plugins, and those commands can take arguments. If you try to execute a command that requires arguments without providing them, Sublime will generate an error and can't finish executing the command because it doesn't know how. Sometimes you don't know what arguments you're going to need until the situation arises for you to actually invoke the command. But with input handlers, Sublime can prompt you for any missing command arguments and then execute the command, allowing you to make your commands much more open-ended and useful and provide more interactivity for them. In order to pull this off, your command must be in the command palette, very important, and you have to define input handler classes that tell Sublime how it should actually prompt you for the missing arguments. These input handlers are represented as classes inside of your plugin with very specific base classes so that Sublime knows exactly what that class represents and the name of the class is used to represent the name of the argument when it's actually used as an input handler. And then all you have to do is add an input method to your command to tie everything together and get Sublime to prompt you. Now, when it comes to the actual input handler classes, there are a variety of methods and functionalities that are in these classes, which we didn't cover in today's lesson because this is just an introduction to them. In the next lesson, we're going to cover the details of what all of the methods in these classes are and what they're for. And what other functionality exists in the world of input handlers. So if you haven't already used those buttons down below to thumb subscribe and share and ring the bell notification icon, you run the risk of not knowing when this lesson drops so that you would get that extra information. So you probably want to do that. But until that next lesson does drop, this is Odat Nerd asking you to please have a sublime day.